Ah, uh, hey, it's Joel. You know, I like to print things. I print big things and small things and things in all sorts of different colors. Sometimes I use different materials, but I'm not known for finishing my 3D prints. I'm not known for painting and sanding and all that stuff that goes along with it, but that changes today. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. <laughs> Welcome back. Look, this is a Daft Punk helmet. I followed the tutorial from Adafruit. In fact, this is the Adafruit helmet model. I use this. It's awesome. It's so awesome. I actually finished a prop. I went through, I printed, sanded, XTC 3D, filler primer, regular primer, air drying putty, paints, acrylic bending, glue stuff. It's all there. I did it all and I'll tell you about it. But first, I really want to try this on. I'm kind of excited because uh, I haven't had the chance. So, so let's see. What do you think? Yeah, look at, oh, I'm steaming up the visor here. I don't know how Daft Punk dances, but there we go. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, geez. That's disappointing. I mean, I put all this work into this helmet and I think it's a really cool helmet. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna add electronics. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you know, I just don't think electronics and my head are gonna fit in this. I mean, it's still gonna be cool, right? It'll still be cool. I mean, I really like to wear it though. It's a good thing I made this one. <laughs> I was not gonna make this without trying this on. I have a huge head. It's larger than other heads. And I knew that this shape wasn't gonna fit my head. I measured with one of those fabric tape measure things and uh, I could barely get it on. And if I squish my ears down, it doesn't. Fit. So here we go. I printed, if this is 100% scale, this is 120% scale. And I printed, finished, did all the stuff to this one as well. Because not only will it fit on my head, I can wear my glasses while it does sit here. Here we go. I do need to add some foam else it does that. But if I add a little bit of foam in there, doo -doo, I don't know how robots dance. That's pretty cool. Plenty of room for electronics. I mean, I look awesome. Oh, there we go. Daft Punk helmets, one normal sized and one Joel's head sized. And this was a lot of fun. So if, if this is all you wanted to see, great, the video is over. We'll see you on the next one. No, you know what? I'm gonna talk about the process. I'm gonna show you how I went about putting these all together and making this happen. And then at the end, we're gonna talk about what's next. This was a completely new process for me because I hadn't really finished anything before. Uh, I've done the little ghosty with the tongue that sticks out. I did some XTC 3D and sanding on that, but I was like, oh, I hate sanding. And so I didn't really complete it. I also did the big money box for Seattle Children's. This thing, and this is sanded and painted and finished and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's different. The ghosty I gave up because I was lazy and the children's Mario block money box thing, I didn't do as good of a job as I wanted and it's just flat surfaces and a lot of 90 and 45 degree angles. So really it shouldn't have been that hard. This is new. These are round. These have cool shapes. These are, it's a freaking helmet. That's what it is. So with any helmet build, you, you do have a lot of steps to go through. For these, we started with the prints. This was printed in the Protopasta Matte Fiber HTPLA. This one was printed with these two parts in Protopasta Matte Fiber HTPLA, but the top was in a no-name PLA, and that's because I ran out of Matte Fiber PLA. Just to make sure we, we have full transparency here, I did have some failures. This, let's see, this is Candy Apple Red from Protopasta. These are all matte fibers right here. I did have failures and just know when you, when you go to make a project like this, you're going to fail. One thing or another is going to fail. Don't get discouraged. Just, just keep going. So once you have successful prints, you need to clean them up. Both of these were printed with a brim and uh, 3D Printing 101, a brim is almost like extra skirt lines that attach to the print, which increase the surface area of the plastic that's touching the build plate, ensuring better stickage. That's the scientific term for it. Once you've gone through and cleaned up 
all of the, the brims or whatever from each of the model pieces, then what you need to do is put them together. So each of these models came with these holes that these craft sticks can be inserted into. I used coffee stirrers because they're like craft sticks, but cheaper. And there's three model pieces. Coffee stirrers went into each of the ear holes. And uh, I don't know if you can see kind of in the back right there, there's spots along the back of the helmet where uh, these craft stick coffee stirrers went in. One thing that I did have to overcome with this model is the butt joints. So, uh, butt, right? Yeah. He must work out. The pieces stick together, uh, they're just butt joints and they're very thin. So super glue or epoxy or whatever is gonna hold, but it's gonna be better if you can reinforce it. So what I did on the inside of each one, the styrene plastic is just super glued as a patch over the butt joint. And that actually provides reinforcement, especially when you're talking about that right there, right up against the visor, right there. So that's going to give you some extra protection and that will allow the model to be more sturdy. So when you're sanding it, you don't have to worry as much. My wife and I, we were actually sanding these while on vacation and uh, it didn't go well because they started to break apart where the butt joints were and not where the craft sticks were. So we put them aside and we waited till we got home and then I reinforced everything with that styrene plastic on the inside. And then at that point, the model was fantastically strong. Like it just, it even felt different just holding it. It flexed different, it was, it was fantastic. And so if you're ever gonna go about this build and you're using this model from Adafruit, think about reinforcing the joints with some styrene plastic or some foam or something rigid that you can super glue over the joint surface. So when you're gluing these butt joints, uh, I, I used super glue. Well, actually, I used uh, Goliath glue. It was, it was sent to me for a fan mail Friday. I just wanna see if it worked. I did some tests and it worked really well and it, it worked just like a super glue because I think it is just like a super glue. A super so there we went. So as I talk, I'm just gonna mark off what I've talked about. Once these were all glued up and sturdied, I did want to sand it further. Uh, sanding was happening while they weren't glued as appropriate and as strong as possible. And so now that I had these styrene patches in and everything was sturdy, I went to sand it. And when you look at this picture here, you can tell the No Name Purple PLA had some huge ridges that I needed to overcome. And I was sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. But what I did was I'd try wet sanding. I'd never done that before. So what I did is I got a bucket of water and I took my 220 grit sandpaper and I dunked it in the water and then I would sand and then I would dunk it and then I would sand. What's great is a lot less dust. It kept the temperature down on the plastic, which means I was sanding it more than I was melting it. And it was much easier to clean up because the water just took all the dust away. It was awesome. If you haven't tried wet sanding apart and it can be wet sanded, I highly suggest you try it. Once you've sanded these down to an appropriate level of smoothness, something that you're okay with, what I, what you can do and what I did is apply some air drying putty. This is stuff that will just dry and cure because of the air and it fills in places where the ridges may be too great or there might be gaps or there might be spaces that the model doesn't meet. This air drying putty is going to provide a filling method. It's a way of filling in holes and gaps and stuff and then when it cures you can sand it, paint it, prime it and it becomes a part of your model. Both of these actually had lots of this red air drying putty that I had available and uh, it worked great. After air drying putty was applied and cured and then after I sanded that down with 220 grit sandpaper, I wanted to use some filler primer. There's two methods to this. Or I, there's probably many methods, but in the past what I'd done is uh, a very, very heavy coat of filler primer. Just caked it on, let it dry, and then sand it down. And for this one, what I wanted to do was do a light coat just to fill in some gaps in some areas. A light coat and then I could sand that down much easier. Filler primer can take up to three days to properly cure and dry. I didn't have that kind of time and so a lighter coat is going to take less time and it's much easier to sand. Also during the build I used XTC3D. Uh, that's a self-leveling epoxy from Smoothon. Smoothon makes all sorts of great products and XTC3D is their self-leveling epoxy that is geared more towards covering up the print lines in 3D prints. And I think the application of XTC3D is something that I just need to learn to do a little bit better. Uh, I did apply some to the Ghosty and I didn't do a very good job. I think with this, I did a better job, but I'm still using too much. I think an overall 
light coat of XTC 3D would be appropriate. Uh, also, anything that drips down, I really, really need to uh, soak up and sop up and get off of the model. Once XTC 3D is properly cured and dried, it's sandable, you can sand it down. Uh, I, I sanded it lightly with, I think it was 220 grit, and then I added some more filler primer over the top. And the reason I did that was because, I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but and according to the instructions from Adafruit, I did the filler primer over the XTC 3D because it was just gonna make it super duper smooth. And it, it did for the most part. Uh, it actually worked great. Most of the model was fantastically smooth and 220 was a, a great grit choice for sanding it down, but I did run into an issue. One of the things you have to be careful of when applying glues and adhesives is spillover and push out, and I didn't pay attention. So when I applied super glue in certain areas, there was glue that pushed out of the joint and it leaked and then it created a big, hard, irregular blob on the outside of the model. Right back here is where some of it would gather on, on this model and right here. So what I had to do was use a file to actually file down the glue that leaked out and then reprime it, resand it, re reprime it again and repaint it and stuff. So one of the things that you need to make sure you do if you're making this model or any model, you need to clean up after yourself as you go. If you put some glue in a joint and there is some squeeze out or some spit out or whatever I said, whatever the right word was, use a towel or something to clean it up so that as it dries, there's not a lot of uh, hardened glue outside that you need to clean up. And that's something I'll need to do on the next model. And now it was time to paint these bad boys. We had the prints, we had them filler primered, sanded, XTC 3D coated, sanded, filler primered, sanded, regular primer, sanded, and it was time to paint. For paint, I just kind of, I got this metallic silvery Rust-Oleum paint from Home Depot and I just sprayed it. And I don't know if I did a good job spraying it, but I thought it looked great. And this is a, a technique I can work on, I'm sure. But I think the results are decent for being the first time applying this paint. I did some tests on some cardboard. It looked okay. So I thought, let's go for it. And I did it. One of the problems though, once I had it painted and once it was cured is I wanted to touch and hold the models and my uh, my fingers left prints on the paint or the, the paint became marred or it just, it didn't look very good. So according to my friends, uh, in fact, it was Uncle Jesse to be specific. He said, hey, you know what? On my Captain America shield, I used some Meguiar's car wax, I think it was. And he just applied it and it looked great. I thought, hey, you know what? That's a good idea. I should go get some. But then I remembered I had some unopened uh, turtle carnauba wax and uh, I thought, let's give it a shot. And it came with a lint-free cloth and I got one of the helmets and I sprayed it on and I rubbed it into place. And it's amazing. It worked, a car product. I mean, it makes sense. We're trying to protect paint. And now when I touch it, it looks okay. And I've only done one coat on each of these helmets, but I think they could stand another coat. I think that, um, I think I'm really surprised at how well that worked. So car turtle carnauba wax apparently works to protect the paint of your models. Who knew? Finally, paint dried, carnauba wax applied, everything is good. I think uh, I need to talk about laser cutting acrylic. So in the files you get from Adafruit, you get these models. These are models of what the visor should look like and the shape it should take. And what they say to do is print these out and then flatten them and then mark on some acrylic and then score the acrylic and then break the acrylic into the shape that you want. I thought that seems like a lot of work to go through. I have a laser cutter. What I did in Fusion 360 is find the length of this and find the length of this, and then find the distance between here and here. And I recreated this shape, and then that shape was a flat CAD drawing, which I then converted to an SVG, which I then brought into my Muse laser, which I then laser cut out the acrylic. It was great. The acrylic I got from Amazon, it was like 0.118 inches, which I guess is like two or three millimeters. In the Muse settings, I did 100% um, power, 50% speed, three passes, just to ensure. I know that was probably overkill for the most part, but once the acrylic was cut out of the laser cutter, I could bend it. And I bent it by using a vise and a heat gun. 
The Adafruit people use a pan of ice and a heat gun. I just used a regular set of clamps. Worked great. And then I used gloves and I held the acrylic up and I was bending it and I was trying to, to heat it to the point. Acrylic gets hot, but the gloves helped and I bent it to a point and I test fit it in the helmet. Eventually when I got the shape right, it worked. And then I added in some hot glue. I just hot glued in the acrylic on both of these and it worked great. And that's where we sit. That's where we are. Look at that. This is fantastic. I had such a fun time making these. I just, I want to make more. This is infectious. This is addictive. Being able to finish models, like paint them and sand them and prime them. And you're going to be seeing that a bit more here on the channel because 3D printing is great and 3D printing models with multiple colors is cool. Multiple materials is cool. Oxidizing and patinas are cool, but you know, this is just another skill to have in your skill set. And I think, I think I'm gonna be finishing more models. I think that's exciting. I got through my checklist. I got through everything that I wanted to talk about, which means we're at the point where we need to talk about what's next. And uh, I hope I hope you find this cool. Let me uh, let me get these. So originally, uh, what I thought about doing was using the same LEDs that are in these shoes. I had a pair of these. Well, here I'll show you. So these shoes, these shoes light up, and they can be uh, they can be different colors. They can blink and do all sorts of good stuff. But these shoes, while being app controlled, I think. I think they're great. I think that they provide fun. Uh, they fit my feet, but I had some that were broken. And so I thought, what if I take them apart and remove the light emitting parts of them? And then I have something like this. Yeah, look at that. The problem is though, I mean, I could, well, let's see. So if I have this visor here, I put that in there. I mean, it's got a chance, right? It's It's got a chance at working, but it's not, fully there. These can't bend and twist the way that I want to. I tried taking the LEDs out of this, but there's this plastic coating that they're kind of embedded into and these wires are uh, stuck to this metal piece that runs through the entirety of it and it provides the rigidity. Also this part, the part that controls the lights and has the Bluetooth connection to the phone, which allows you to use an app to change their behavior it's epoxied into this. So there's a sleeve that goes over it and then epoxy is thrown in there and then it's set forever. It's never coming out. I tried adjusting, but it just didn't work. And I think that while it was a good endeavor to try to use these for something, I think they're gonna have to be used for something else. So these shoes I will wear, these will go on another project. Which means I had to put it in order at Adafruit. I've got some rings to go on the ears here and I have some NeoPixels that'll go in the visor. I got some, their Feather Bluetooth, I can't even remember the name right now, but they allow uh, use of the Bluefruit app and I can then put some code in there to control the lights using the app, which will be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be doing some soldering, which I haven't done since high school. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you. So I, I, hope to, I hope to show you some cool stuff. Hey, you know what? This was a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to take these to the next level. And uh, I'll be bringing these to New York Maker Fair. And I'll have an announcement about New York Maker Fair here in the next few days, hopefully. But uh, all the details are almost set in place. And I'll be able to tell you where I'm going to be, who I'm going to be with, and what I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, you know, I have an idea. Here's some foam. So for helmets, you don't want stiff foam, you want squishy foam. So if I put squishy foam in there, there we go. Hey, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of when really cool stuff like this is uploaded to the channel. I hope you can hear me because you're awesome and I love you guys. And as always, high five.